Okay, I would like to continue our conversation uh, regarding Chapter 10, which is Planning Average Resources in Intangible Assets. And I will be discussing Learning Objective 2, explaining the depreciation. Discuss the depreciation in Chapter 3 because it, it is part of the adjusted journal entries. So what's depreciation again? A lot of times the students get confused with the de definition of depreciation in economics and um, versus accounting. So depreciation and allocation will be a decrease in value. So you can appreciate the asset in value or depreciate. In accounting, it's different. So what's depreciation in accounting? It's a process of allocating cost to expenses. Okay, so you remember based on the matching principle, we cannot write off or expense at once cost of a large plan asset if it's going to benefit us or produce revenue over several years. So matching will be violated. You have that Polish sausage effect where you have one uh, fiscal year full of meat and then the rest, maybe five next fiscal years, will be full, full of sauce, salt. So we will allocate a cost of a plant asset to expense over the useful life in a rational and systematic manner. There are several methods to do that. Um, and again, please remember, it's not asset valuation method. We're not valuing an asset. We're not estimating the current value of it. We're simply allocating cost. And it will be applied to land improvements, building equipment, but not land. Why? Because land has indefinite useful life, so you cannot spread cost over infinity. And <clears throat> they, these are called depreciable assets because their revenue-producing ability will decline over assets' useful life. So this slide is really helpful for a lot of small exercises or true-false questions on exam or quizzes. Okay, so some factors that you will need to know. You will need to know cost, okay? Cost was discussed in Learning Objective 1. Then you need to know useful life. Useful life is estimated by the management and based on needs for repair, service life, and uh, vulnerability to obsolescence. So, for example, if I know that my printers will, they physically can survive for seven years, but we know that they become obsolete in five, I might just pick up five years as a useful life. And you also need salvage value, or sometimes it's called residual value, retirement value. So what is that? It's an estimate of the asset's value at the very end of its useful life. So maybe we plan to sell it, um, used asset for $10,000, or maybe it's just going to go in the junkyard for 1000 And um, helpful hints up here. We will um, talk about depreciation expense account. It's a regular expense account that is reported on the income statement. Normal balance is deb debit, nothing fancy. And then accumulated depreciation account is a contra asset, if you remember. Contra asset, so it's going to be reported right underneath the asset it's contrary to. So it will be equipment or building or furniture. So therefore, it is reported on the balance sheet. And again, it is a deduction from plan assets. Okay, so several depreciation methods. So majority of companies use what's called straight line, but then you could have units of activity, about 5% uh, declining balance, and then other mass methods. Other methods are allowed as long as they're systematic. So you don't just randomly pick and say, I'm going to depreciate 1000 this year and then 2000 next year, then you will be simply smoothing your um, net income and that is not allowed. My purpose is in this class, we will be only do two, two, two methods, straight line and units of activity. If you see C in any of the assignments that I'm giving you, please do not do declining methods. I will skip it in the class. So here's your data. We have a small truck Estimated salvage value is a thousand, useful life five, and useful life in miles hundred thousand dollars. So let's take a look. We will, and somehow they skipped cost in that one, but thank goodness they gave us cost here. Straight line will expense or allocate the same amount each year. So, what will be your formula? 
depreciable cost. What's depreciable cost? It is cost, the overall cost, less salvage value. Okay, so if you're writing down as a formula, you can simply do cost less salvage value divided by useful life in years. Okay, it will give you annual, because you're dividing by the years, annual depreciation expense. And it is the same year. So if I were to plot it, here's your five years. Okay, you don't have to even apply the rate, but you can think it's a, a one fifth every time. So every year will come up with twenty four hundred dollars. Now let's take a look at the end of the year. What is this? So the first year, at the end of first year, my annual depreciation expense as well as accumulated depreciation are the same. Okay, what's book value? If you remember, book value is I'm going to pencil it in. Book value is value on the books or on the balance sheet, right? So it will be cost minus accumulated depreciation because that's how we, we report it on the balance sheet. That's considered to be book value. So book value is 10600 And remember, it's not 12000 minus 2400 It's cost, and our cost was $13,000. So what did the following journal entry? Depreciation expense debited and accumulated depreciation credited. Now next year, we're going to do the same journal entry again. So your um, annual depreciation is 2400 But look at the accumulated depreciation. Now the balance there is 4800 Now how come? Since accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, it's permanent. So we will not close it from year to year. Depreciation expense will close out. It's a temporary account and it has any other expense, but not accumulated depreciation. So you can see at the end of useful life, you have exactly depreciable cost and book value is 1,000. Why? Our salvage value was 1,000. So at the end, your book value must equal salvage value, residual value. Okay, now assume that we purchased this truck not on January 1st, but on April 1st. In this year, in this time, we will have a partial year. So you will apply the same formula. So your annual expense is 2400 But you will multiply it by 9 out of 12. Why? Because you will have 9 months from April 1st till December 31st, 9 out of 12 months, or 1800 that will be depreciated. And then at the very last year, you will end up but probably discarding it only in three months. So remember, as you uh, get your first year in, you got to pay attention what's the date when we receive the truck. So if you have a partial year, you have to apply a fraction. Very similar to interest. Again, remember this is an adjusted journal entry. Okay, so here's another exercise. Um, we purchased machine January 1st. Din, din, din. Remember the uh, to take a look at the date. Um, machine for 50000 estimated uh, to have a useful life of 10 salvage value of 2 and then what's the journal entry if we're using the straight line method so take your cost less salvage value divided by useful life so annual depreciation is 4800 and that will be the journal entry okay um, the next method so out of the two that I will be discussing is units of activity Instead of estimating the useful life in years, you will come up with estimated total units of activity. Okay? And your expense will vary based on the units of activity. So it will not be the same or constant like it was with straight line. Okay? Uh, it's um, sometimes referred as units of production method or units of activity. They form very much alike. So you still take your depreciable cost. What's depreciable cost? I'm going to pencil it in again. Depreciable cost is cost minus salvage value. Salvage value. Do not confuse it with the book value because book value is value on the books, on the balance sheet. That's cost minus accumulated depreciation. Sometimes students get these two mixed up. So your depreciable cost, 13,000 minus 1,000, 12,000, divided by the total estimated unit of our units of activity. So we thought that it's going to drive 100,000 miles. 
So your rate or cost per unit is 12 cents. And then you're simply going to apply this rate to the number of years that we actually drove. So the, this is actually activity that we drove in that particular year. So in that year, it's $1,800, okay? And look at that. So here is your, based on the units of activity that vary by year, the same rate your annual depreciation expense will vary, okay? Cumulated depreciation, again, is calculated as the same in the first year. Then you're going to add one more year, right, 1800 plus 3600 then you're going to add one more year, so now we're at 7800 Now you're going to add one more year, 3000 10800 etc. Still, we magically ended up uh, with 1000 remaining. That's that salvage value. If we were to graph, um, and they, they have all three methods up here, I'm only interested in straight line that looks pretty straight over the years. And then if you look at the units of activity, the shape of this graph will depend on will depend on our activity. So in this case, it's going to go like this. And then declining balance again, I will not be discussing with you guys. Okay, and just more on FYI, depreciation and income tax. So taxes, as you as you realize, it's almost it's governed by the IRS Internal um, Revenue Code. So the rules of depreciation will be different than what you have by GAAP or in your books. And uh, taxpayers um, either use straight line method or a special depreciation method that's accelerated. So it's part of the declining method that's called Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System or MAKERS. Okay, MAKERS is not acceptable under GAAP. So this is for tax rules only. So when we say an accountants have two sets of books, it's actually true. One is GAP and the other one you have to maintain different set of rules for the IRS.